Hi friends, welcome to today's session of Aircraft Design Part 12. Weight and Balancing, which is one of the vital factor leads to effective and safety operation of aircrafts. As previously, you have seen the possible aerospace materials and selection criteria. So, proper selection of materials create an impact on maximum weight of the aircraft can able to carry and help to determine the center of gravity location. If somehow overloading an aircraft can cause the possible followings. The aircraft need a higher takeoff speed which results in a longer takeoff run. So both the rate of climb and the angle of climb will be reduced. So that leads the service ceiling will be lowered. So further it has been noticed that cruise speed will be reduced. So simultaneously cruising range will also be shortened. Due to that, a longer landing rule will be required so leads to an excessive loads will be imposed on the landing gear structure. So based on design constraint which initially we have considered to design an aircraft and based on that material study has done and accordingly material has been selected for that particular design constraint of this aircraft design. Now to justify the percentile of material chosen for each individual component is right or wrong need to find out the individual weight of the component. Then summing up the total weight of the component then to cross check with the weight estimation achieved for our design with a total weight which we have got was 3317.610 kg now coming to as i've said our course outline so first we are going to find out the individual aircraft weight compile empty weight estimation of gross weight and then validate the data then we will find out what are the expected result and conclusion and finally we will see the reference so let's begin to predict the individual component that can be followed with various methodologies such as Raymer, Nikolai and Sadre. the first and foremost thing which we are gonna find is that wing weight so here are the formulas for Raymer as well as Nikolai but in this exercise, I will be preferring to follow the sad ray, which I feel much more flexible and easy. So based on your choice, you can choose the method. So this is the formula for the sad ray. Previously, all the values has been calculated for the particular design based on your design criteria. So these are my parameters, which we already know. So which is unknown is a parameter is a density of the, the wing and the wing density factor. Now wing density factor we can find using our table and using the density which we have chosen for your material selection. So using that relation using the literature review we have taken that for a wing 15% aluminium and 85% composite material. Now looking into that 85% of composite material, I have further classified that I am going to use 55% of carbon fiber and 30% of the glass fiber. Now here when you are choosing the material, it is not only for the outer structure of the wing but also the internal as well as the external structure of the wing. So considering that, that I have taken 15% aluminium and 85% of composite material. Now I know the respective density of the respective material. So uh, since I have taken 15% of aluminium alloy, so I will use to find out the complete wing weight using this form. 
that is 0 0.5, 0 0.15 into 2711. 2711 is that density of the aluminium. So out of the 85, I'm gonna use 55 percentage carbon fiber and 30 percentage of the glass fiber. So uh, to find out the overall wing weight, we are gonna find using this that considering the 100 percentage of an density of an wing. So that means 100 percent means that means one into Row, right so considering that into that mechanism to find out that so 0 0.15 into 2711 2711 is a density of an aluminium and 0 0.55 is the percentile the volume percentile of carbon fiber into the density of a carbon fiber okay so if which have considered as 1544 then considering around 30 percentage of carbon uh, glass fiber so 0 0.3 into 1800 1800 is a density of an a fiber glass epoxy okay so after solving this i am getting about 1795.85 kg per meter cube is my density of an wing so this is the structural density of my wing so after that uh, i got all my parameters from the wing density now looking into the wing density parameter this is a table now wing density parameter it depends on where your engines are located where your fuel tank is located on that particular wing whether it is installed uh, within the wing or uh, in some other places like undercarriage of the wing whether it is a transport your supersonic fighter all those factors will depend based on that your density factor will vary so in my design as i'm telling the large passenger aircraft which consists of 400 passengers so in that i'm gonna use a general aviation engine install on the wing and fuel tank in the wing so i'm gonna take consider about uh, which is ranging within this so i will consider 0.0032 which I will consider for my design. Now, after substituting all the values in the given SADRE method, SADRE formula, which I will get in terms of this value after calculating, that is 267457.69 in terms of Newton, I will get. Now, to convert that from Newton to kg, I will just divide 9.81. So, I got in kg is 27263.78 kg now this is for the weight of a wing now to find out the fuselage weight so again we have two methodologies one is a rem uh, three methodologies in fact Raymer, Nikolai and Sadre so as I've said that I'm gonna prefer Sadre here because I feel much convenient in this method so again further I'm having the length of the fuselage diameter other factors I know ultimate load factor already we have estimated previously we have that here we have one factor called K inlet K inlet is only will be considered one for all the cases if you are using a inlet in the fuselage okay some cases some of the fighter they use an inlet in the fuselage so in that case they you have to take the k inlet as 1.25 otherwise you can simply take one right now here what is again there the density of the fuselage here to find out the density of the fuselage again based on my survey what i have done i have taken 40 percentage aluminium and 60 percentage composite material so out of the 60 percentage composite material i have taken 30 percentage carbon fiber and 30 percentage glass fiber now with the same method here uh, i have found out the density of the fuselage about 2087.6 kg per meter cube now how to find the density factor okay how to find the density factor so again using i will refer a table okay this table this density factor depends on the type of aircraft if it is a transport cargo uh, remote control supersonic uav home built or amphibian so you can uh, choose based on the type of your aircraft so you can see the ranges between uh, some points so here in this here i have considered uh, 0 0.0028 which i have considered over here so it depends on you what value will you consider for your design
okay now after that what you're gonna do is simple you need to substitute that after substituting i got about weight of the fuselage about 2053 20.17147 newton now again i'm converting in terms of kg because uh, maybe later part of that value i may get in kg so i'm keeping both the newton and kg in my hand so now I will move to the horizontal tail. Similar fashion, we have the three methodologies to find out horizontal uh, tail weight and the vertical tail weight. Now here we are going to look into the horizontal tail weight. Suppose in your design, if you don't have any horizontal tail weight, you can ignore that, right? But if you have that horizontal tail weight, so let's consider it. Now again, it is a point. It is up to you whether you want to uh, refer whichever the method uh, methodology. So here I'm showing you three methodology. One is Raymer, Nikolai and second third one is a Sadre. And I'm choosing a Sadre because I feel convenient. So it is up to you whichever methodology you want to follow you can follow no issues in that so here i'm giving the uh, model calculation how i'm gonna proceed for using a sad ray same will be followed for your design so now we will see how to calculate the weight of an horizontal tail so first we have to select the material already we have selected the material so based on this design i have chosen again 15 percentage of aluminium alloy and 85 percentage of the composite material now again i have said there are a lot many types of composite which we already discussed in the previous lecture so here i'm gonna discuss about 55 percentage of carbon fiber and 30 percentage of the glass fiber same method we are going to follow right here we have the data chart where we are going to find out what will be the density of the particular materials so we are going to find out here the what is the density of the particular material so here we know all the data is with us same as horizontal tail but keep in uh, one thing in mind that before proceeding your calculation you must have all the data that is a uh, dimensional data with you before proceeding this thing okay now i have found out as i've taken 15 percentage of aluminium alloy so 0.15 into 2711 that is a density of the aluminium alloy plus 0.55 which you can see that is a 55 percentage of i have taken carbon fiber carbon fiber density is 1544 then i have taken glass fiber which is 30 percentage i have considered it so i have taken 0.30 into 1800 that is a density of a glass fiber so after solving we got this the unit is kg per meter cube now again we will look into the density factor now keep that in mind again the density factor will depends on you have to refer the type of your tail type of your vertical tail and the horizontal tail based on your aircraft design you're going to choose a uh, various kind of tail now that will play a very key role while selecting it now here in the data if you see that it depends on conventional tail t tail h tail canard tail right so if it is a supersonic fighters it will be different some supersonic fighter aircraft you don't have a horizontal tail then if you don't have a horizontal tail then simply the weight of the horizontal you no need to find out even in fact okay but if you have then you have to utilize this formula and this is a formula you have to see k rho ht okay because k rho ht you are going to find for an horizontal tail not for the vertical tail you have to follow this table so as per my requirement i have chosen a conventional tail and a, a, my design is a transport aircraft so i will choose within this particular parameter so um, similarly one more parameters need to select that is ce by ct okay already in my design i have chosen but which is also framed from the same uh, result so after substituting all the value selection parameters you just put it in substitute the value and you get a result about 38102.77 newton so again i have converted in terms of kg you know how to convert to from the newton to kg so keep your units in proper way so do not get confused some of the if you're referring other books or textbooks somewhere they have given in terms of pounds feet so please be 
conscious about that which you need you are considering follow the same trends okay now moving for the further vertical tail vertical tail will be following the same way how we have done for the horizontal similarly i uh, you have to proceed with that further thing i'm i don't want to make this video much lengthier so i'm just keeping the parameters uh, a bit so coming to this point that cr by cv you have to use this particular column to choose cr by cv value okay so again after substituting the values here in this design i have got the weight of the vertical tail about 1613 5.282 newton so again i am converting new uh, kg okay please keep that in mind you make conscious with which you need suppose the gravity you are not multiplying with this complete uh, formula then your uh, unit will come in terms of kg but if you are multiplying then your unit will be in terms of newton please ensure that before putting into it now coming to a very very important is a weight of a landing gear where majority of the people get confused with it so this is a formula now kl is already described what is a kl k is a landing place factor where usually we consider as based on the sadre method we consider as one if until and unless it is an navy aircraft if you are designing a navy aircraft you have to consider 1.8 which is clearly mentioned in the table now k retractable so based on the type of your landing gear you have to choose this factor if it is a fixed for an example you are doing a very small aircraft where you have a fixed landing gear so that time what you are going to do is you are going to take k retract as 1 if a uh, fixed landing gear if it is a retractable landing gear obviously you have to take 1.07 okay now coming to as k um, lg k lg means a density factor now again we will utilize a k density factor how to find out i will show in the next slide now what is hlg hlg is a height of the landing gear right which already have found in your selection of your landing gear b is a wingspan which you already have and so on now what is wl wl is an landing weight which also you have found out but please be conscious with that again whether you are considering in terms of newton or in terms of kg if you are substituting your value in terms of newton then the weight of the landing gear which you will get in terms of newton if you are substituting the value in terms of kg then you will get in terms of kg okay so uh, got it now yeah so here is a klg factor again it depends on the type of aircraft so as i've said i'm designing the large passenger aircraft so i have chosen you have to choose in between these two factors now i will always prefer or i will always say to take a moderate value so here i have considered the moderate value about 0.32 value right so after that I simply have substituted all the parameters over here and after substituting as I've taken the weight of the landing gear in kg so I got my uh, weight of the landing gear about 1065.705 kg now that I have converted in terms of Newton okay so keep that in mind now we will move to the landing gear is done now we will move to the engine weight now engine weight also it have some three methodologies Remo, Nikolai it is up to you which methodology you want to follow again I will follow the Sadre here so in the Sadre this is the formula and these are the factors what is KE, NE, WE so we have based on the engine we have selected after substituting so engine when we have selected we have got the value in terms of Newton so here the when we substitute the value so we will get in the value of newton so from newton again i'm converting in terms of kg so please ensure with your units now 
Now, one more parameter you need to find that is the avionics weight. The what kind of instrumentations are using, flying systems, I mean control system, hydraulic system, uh, and entire avionic furnishings, everything. So, considering that, we will have this parameter as an empty weight, avionics weight to the empty weight. Now, based on again type of aircraft, we have the avionics weight ratios. So, let me consider that I am going to take the avionics weight as 0 0.015. Now, we know from our very beginning estimation that is empty weight to the total takeoff weight, we got about 0.46. Now, from there, we know what is our total weight. Then from there, we can get our empty weight. Empty weight is coming around 152622.3006 kg. So that is our empty weight. Now from the empty weight, can we find the avionics weight? We know this uh, ratio. Now we just simply need to substitute over here. We can find what will be the expected avionics weight. So when I got it, I getting around uh, 2289.3345 kg is our avionics weight and if i get in terms of newton i'm getting 22458.3715 newton so i have got all my uh, avionics weight and everything so understanding that apart from that if you want to find the separately that is a, a flight control weight and uh, that you can find it separately using remmer and Nikolai formula if you want to find out the hydraulic uh, system weight, avionic system weight, you can utilize this formula. Then electrical system, air conditioning, anti-icing system, then furnishings uh, separately. You can use the separate formula to find out that separately. Okay. Now, what is our main motto? Main motto to find out that whether uh, the material which we have selected for our aircraft is whatever it's right or wrong right so how we can do we need to sum up all the total weight of the component and along with the fuel so fuel and all uh, fuel payload is known pre from the previous calculations and uh, we have got some amount of like this amount right so after summing up all the values and you can find i'm getting around uh, 2977416.607 newton and if i want to convert that in terms of kg i'm getting 3035083.318 kg now comparing this value with the previous which i have estimated or which we got it based on iterations so we got around 3317.8.7.610 so you can find the difference the value which we have found out that means it is lower than what we have obtained so it shows that whatever we have chosen that means we have chosen the material in a very effective way now the value which we have given we are getting the lower value now coming to as i've said our course outline so first we are going to find out the individual aircraft weight compile empty weight estimation of gross weight and then validate the data then we will find out what are the expected result and conclusion and finally we will see the reference now here as we have seen that what we have estimated initially and what we have obtained right now it's there are ample of error so now we can move to our next iteration iteration 2 to validate the result which we have obtained the value of 33178.610 kg now we are trying to make that value closer to this particular value now we will make some slight modification in selecting the parameters let's for an example considering the second iteration we are going to change the material so what i have chosen in my respective design i have considered 15 percentage of aluminium 80 percentage of composite material and five percentage of steel alloys now using the material engineering material density i have applied and i'm getting around 2106 now same only the changes which i made is a changing the material selection for my design 
because I want to find out the total weight which we have estimated initially the value should be closer to that particular value now after substituting I am getting around the weight similar fashion I am gonna change the fuselage weight here also I have just considered change the percentage of composites and uh, increased uh, percentage in steel alloy because steel alloys we will be considering in case of bolts and nuts so river joints and other parameters so let consider the 10 percentage of steel alloys or other alloys so to avoid such thing I have just taken overall steel alloys let's assume the overall steel alloys now using that again my density is changing now i am substituting in this formula the other parameters remain same now after substituting that i am getting this is the weight of the fuselage now moving to that horizontal tail again i am doing the same thing for the horizontal tail so for the horizontal tail what i am doing again i was preferring uh, I am just taking the same value or the percentile as I have considered for the wing. So followed with the formula, there are no other parameters has been changed except the density. So after substituting the density, I am getting this parameter weight. Moving to next is similar fashion, the vertical tail configuration. Okay. Vertical tail configuration I have chosen similar way as I have taken for wing and horizontal. Now again the only factor change is a density. No other factor. So after substituting that value over here, I am getting the value something like this. That is this as you can see here. Now looking into the landing gear and the engine, there is no factor of density. So I can sim simply ignore that. So density or, or the weight of the landing gear remains same as we have estimated or calculated before. Similarly as the engine weight, there is not much change. Similarly, the empty weight also there is no change in the empty weight. Here we are not making any sort of changes. But yes, now let's compare the data which we have calculated in the case 1 and case 2. Okay, so as I've said, our main motor to attain this value 33178.610, which we have got based on initial estimation and calculation of that. Now, looking into that case 1 and case 2, yes, in that case 1 and 2, you can see, you can find that in case 1, where I have got 303508.318 kg that was an overall weight which i have got now in the last case as i have changed and modified some of the material selection for different cases of components and i got around 316153.388 kg now in this case what we can see again by comparing the data you can see that value which we are getting which we have estimated initially in the weight estimation we are getting closer to that value so uh, this iteration can be vary okay until and unless we are getting the value closer what we have estimated now here one conclusion what is that one positive factor that the value which we have attained is less value that means uh, if the va we can converge the parameters but in case the value which we which you have estimated and you getting the value uh, more than what is estimated initially then that might be a major error so this is one of the positive impact while designing so always you can see you should converge your parameters what you have estimated initially so Again, with your further uh, iterations by changing the various uh, including, you can also include uh, different materials for your each and every component based on the requirements or the study and or else you can also uh, do some kind of permutation combination with the percentage of your uh, material that you have already considered for your particular element or an component. So. 
it shows that whatever we have chosen that means we have chosen the material in a very effective way and uh, which has also helped to reduce the gross weight of the aircraft so i hope uh, you also have to follow this same way pattern to understand whether the uh, material selection for your aircraft is truly efficient or not or truly perfect so as i've said you must avoid the overweight of a aircraft so it leads to a lot many problems so after finding this we will move to the next which was the center of gravity keep updating with us so in upcoming video you are going to see how to calculate the center of gravity for your particular aircraft and what are the parameters are required you know how the center of gravity play a very important role so apart from that you can further refer to these other textbooks uh, general aviation aircraft design aircraft design a conceptual approach then aircraft design which i highly recommend and i have personally written one book you can say uh, where i have uh, compiled all those work which the other eminent authors have found out so you can find in my book also aircraft design guidebook for freshmen so this all the things which i am giving the resources it's not for promoting purposes so thank you students uh, thank you viewers uh, for watching this video hope this video will be very useful for you all and um, if you have any requested video you can drop down in the command box and if you have missed other episodes of this aircraft design link is in the description box don't forget to watch like and subscribe to wings of arrow take care stay safe